to keep it exciting here at America Trends. We aren't kidding. And Fridays, you get the very best of our excited excitement. Yes. <laughs> Every week I say it's been the craziest week in politics, so let's just say it's been one of the wildest weeks ever. Started out with Hillary beating Bernie in the California primary and being crowned the presumptive Democrat nominee and becoming the first female nominee in a major party in U.S. history. Thanks to you, we've reached a milestone. The first time, the first time in our nation's history that a woman will be a major party's nominee. All right, well, Bernie Sanders did the math, and he said, uh, yeah, not so fast. You didn't win. If it weren't for the unelected superdelegate, you wouldn't be the winner at all. Here you go. Next Tuesday, we continue the fight in the last primary in Washington, D.C. And then we take our fight for social, economic, racial, and environmental justice to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, David, it's great. <laughs> then Donald Trump held a big press conference just to announce that he will be holding another press conference next week. I am going to give a major speech on <laughs> probably Monday of next week. And we're going to be discussing all of the things that have taken place with the Clintons. I think you're going to find it very informative and very, very interesting. I think that's the first time in American history that all the networks covered a press conference live that was just intended to tease an upcoming press conference. But with, I, I mean, I guess I have to admit I'm guilty of teasing too with that. I want to bring it over to my guy, Barry Nussbaum. He's our political analyst here on America Trends, and you can find him at Barry Nussbaum because he's trying to, he's trying to up his socially media presences <laughs> right now. I think he informed me of that before yeah. we started Find Barry.com. Find Barry.com. Right he on. He his own web address, too. This man is a, a man of wonders in my mind tonight. <laughs> in my mind as well. For reasons that only his wife knows at this moment, which sounds really, really strange. Yes, exactly. Uh, Barry, welcome back to the show. Barry, uh, what do you make of this political week? Where do we even go with this from here? Well, first of all, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's nice to have you with us. <laughs> nice to be uh, with and you. And I'm, I'm glad that the airport got you down safely. Yes, yes, and, and um, yes. Thank okay, you. and so to answer your question, uh, it is a week of bizarre, as you said. And in the opening, we talked about that a little bit, that um, Bernie Sanders was supposed to surrender. Uh, Barack Obama sat with him and negotiated the surrender. Right. Uh, Bernie Sanders went down the driveway and proclaimed, we're going to fight on, we're going to Philadelphia, the revolution isn't going to die. I'm surprised he didn't quote from Fidel Castro. <laughs> Um, for him, he's, he he's going up in the mountains with his guerrilla troops, and they're not going to surrender easily. At the same time, Hillary Clinton, uh, including the superdelegates, is claiming victory, and AP has a study out that about 98% of them are not going to leave their commitment to uh, endorse her and vote for her at Philadelphia. So with superdelegates, she's over the hump. She's the nominee. Uh, Bernie, I think, wants to negotiate a surrender that is I give up in exchange for being a major part of the platform. The Democratic Party is going back to the time of Eugene Debs uh, as the socialist candidate because he's going to negotiate major socialistic programs. Okay, and, and that's how is gonna Hillary going to run on that platform? Right. And which ones of those is he going to? Which what, what do you think? We don't know yet. But what, what's your best guess? Because I mean, I've heard all kinds of people speculating about this, and your instincts are usually pretty good. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, Bernie's all about free stuff that comes from the free stuff making machine. Uh -huh. And so for him, uh, it's been uh, you go to college and that's free, and you get health insurance and that's free, and you need unemployment and uh, that's free, and health care and you shouldn't pay for that either. And there's nothing in the economic model uh, of Bernie Sanders that has any semblance of where the money comes from. And that's going to be Hillary's major problem. If she's got to drag that anchor into November, she's got a major problem on her hands because a vast majority of America knows that it's um, BS economics and it's, it's indefensible. And Donald Trump is praying that that gets into the platform.
I want to ask you about something because I, I think this is a really interesting thing that is also trending this week that um, one of the things that came into my uh, just I noticed it this week because I was talking about it on several shows is that there's an increased suicide rate among middle-aged white men uh, there is a an increased um, well there's a lack of a glass ceiling really in fact men today the average man in the workforce today makes less than he did in 1973 proportionately um, so so times aren't good for men and now you have Hillary and she has the women's vote we get that um, but she's surrounding herself with people like Elizabeth Warren uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz this is kind of this whole women's I'm a woman president vote for me because of my gender I really have much else to offer is that gonna work for her if the glass ceiling is is proven to be the fake theory that many of us have thought for a long time it really was. Yeah, I think there's a there's a, a subtext to that. It's a great question, uh, Dr. G. And I think the subtext that that the Republican strategists working with Trump ought to be hearing loud and clear is the following: Hillary has always run as I'm the woman's candidate, mm -hmm. and women get behind me because I'm going to uh, be the first. And she's she's done a lot of things as the first, right. uh, or in the case of Secretary of State, uh, the second. But having said that, uh, it's really important to remember that she is a serial enabler of an abuser of women that goes back three decades. Right. And if Trump is smart strategically, he's going to beat on that like a drum as part of his talking well, Now, it's points. interesting you say that because uh, Mitch McConnell and a lot of the establishment say he, sh he, sh he shouldn't, Mr. Trump should not bring up her personal past. They don't think that's a good place to go. They should that Mr. Trump should stick to policy and nothing personal. But you're advising otherwise. Yeah, I would say so. And, and here's why. On the exact issue that you're zooming in on, which is the women's vote, this is a revolution. This is the first time a woman has ever led a major political party and to be the standard bearer. That's mm -hmm. an extraordinary event. But the reality is she's undeserving of that role because she enabled the abusing of women over a long period of time. I think that goes to her character. There's one thing, stand by your man, right? I don't think what Bill Clinton did with women or who they were is as important as what Hillary did to slander those women, destroy their reputations, embarrass, humiliate them to the point of them going away. And that's what she did. Uh, very nice, Mom. Thank you. He's staying with us, so we're going to have you I'm back in just a moment. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay with us. More American Trends. It's so Friday here today. You're not going to want to miss this.